Previously on Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Take that, you shitty door! That's how you do it! Oh my god, the kicking the fucking door down ended up coming true after all! Let's see that shit again! Do it again, Sly! Show that shit! Oh yeah! Woo! This is a fucking reality now, motherfuckers! Woo! And now back to Paranormal Site. Sneaky B, back with some more Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. When we last left off, we decided to go out exploring as Yako and Mio. Except it didn't do anything. We just kept, it just kept telling us how we explored and nothing happened. We just stood there all day. And so these two went to this location and did nothing. The end. Until I had to realize, oh my God, I have to get him to meet up with freaking Tetsuo and just his, his body. Oh my God. And look at them. Look at these main characters sharing information with each other. I legitimately thought it was gonna be like this whole freaking game before they realized that the janitor was, was Nejima, you know? So that's good. I mean, they still don't have a picture of him. So they don't know exactly what he looks like. But at the very least, they have that knowledge, right? That has now been acquired. But we also met up with Richter with Tetsuo and Ario, which also led to a shocking and disgusting discovery of Michio's stepfather dead in the building and that he was, in fact, the one to kidnap Haraway's son in an attempt to sacrifice him and give himself eternal youth or something. I don't know. Basically, he was crazy as fuck. And Haraway just kind of loses it, understandably. I'm almost wondering if this was even a good thing for her to learn. I don't know. I sort of think ignorance might have been bliss here because basically there was it showed that she had no chance of ever actually saving him. And you see that she's pretty much committed to trying to revive him, even if Nejima ends up destroying pretty much the entire city in the process. By the way, you guys did inform me of something and it's so obvious and I don't know. I don't know why it didn't click with me. I was like, wait, why isn't Tetsuo like basically detecting that Harway is not being truthful because she isn't being truthful, right? She does have a cursed stone. Richter does know that. She definitely is planning to kill people or, you know, or bum soul dregs off other people. And it's because it's daytime, of course, so the, the freaking curse doesn't work. Ah, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sometimes I feel like this, this game is too smart for me. I just can't keep up with it. There have been multiple times throughout this playthrough where I'm like, like, I don't know if this makes sense or something. And I'm just, and I'm like, and now I've reached the point where I'm like, I just don't trust myself anymore, all right? Like, if I don't understand something, clearly I am just missing something here and I need to stop and think about it hard or maybe not not hard i don't know whatever lets me actually arrive at the answer but yes that was super obvious and i, I should have realized that so but thank you for the, the heads up oh and also in regards to how did mr Janucci know about michio's and the kidnapping thing right like, like as that's likely the dirt that he had on her i forgot about this again the conversation with him near the beginning of the game from richter said that he saw michio kidnap shuichi that day that's where he got that information from right right that's right there's a lot going on in this game like i mean don't be wrong this is in no way a critique okay this game is immaculately written so far it's really freaking good but there's a lot of plot points and it it does i think make it also a little hard sometimes to remember especially when i have like you know a day in between a size a weekend in between uh episodes to, to keep track of some of these uh significant plot points but anyway last episode uh bg titan avatar said yeah i can't say i blame harway for snapping holy hell for a year, she thought the fact that her husband refused to pay the ransom had killed her child. She spun into a deep depression due to grief and isolation. Then she finds out that not only was the kidnapper never going to give her son back due to him wanting to use him for a ritual, that didn't even work, mind you, but it was also revenge on the police for putting away Nejima, the man that Haraway herself helped find and arrest. Frick yeah, it snapped too. Oh, God damn, I know, right? It's like, oh, Jesus, God almighty. Can't even imagine how that would like that that how you would feel from that. I'm honestly not too surprised at this point that she's just sort of like she isn't trying to even like cope, right? To essentially come to the point of accepting his death and moving on. It's no, this is gonna work. I'm gonna do it. I I actually I really think Harway is gonna be a problem <laughs> like down the line. I, I kind of I'm kind of getting that feeling. Like we end up stopping Nejma or something, but Harway will just fucking kill everybody. I, I mean, like, you feel for her, though, right? Like, you definitely feel for her. Unless Richter is there to help bring her back to reality. It is interesting because a lot of these characters, because they have, like, a partner with them, right? Like, Richter for Haraway is there to keep her grounded. Mio is there to keep Yako grounded. I don't know if I would say Rayo is keeping Tetsuo grounded, but they're definitely... He's definitely helping him, obviously. Helping him work through this case, so... Man, if only Sugar had a partner, right? And that he could have relied on and, you know, didn't die in one end and then in the other end just, you know, 
get sent home in a taxi. Damn it, Yoko. But BG, thank you so much for your uh, incredibly accurate comment. And here's that reason you are comment of the day. I will say it's kind of nice this like bit of daytime we have because it has sort of turned the game into like much less of a horror experience for like a period. So it's not like quite as stressful. I mean, it still is because I mean, we just found like a completely fucked up scene, but it's definitely turned into even more of like a, a mystery investigation kind of thing. It's interesting though how my um my timeline has not branched off yet, really. Like it's still seemingly, I mean, I mean, I still have made decisions, right? There's a, a lot of, we've gotten to this point because literally I, you know, made the decision back here to make sure that Mio didn't die and don't talk to the janitor and the decision here to have them meet up and a few other things, but it hasn't done this thing like with Shogos where it essentially branched off into two, well, I guess I wouldn't say significant scenarios because this one was a bit, this one was significant and then this one just kind of like went and immediately ended. I don't know, it kind of makes you wonder if, if it ever will do that, you know, like come to a point where it really branches off in that way, or if it's just more like one just leads straight to a game over or a dead end before pushing you back to the other one. Either way, uh, I'm really enjoying it. The pacing of this game is pretty awesome, and I'm actually really happy. I've seen a lot of you guys say you're enjoying this as well, so uh, I'm glad. It's always it's always a good feeling, right? When we find some like really relative unknown game, and you're just like, what the fuck is this? And we just come together and love the fuck out of it, right? It's such a such a great feeling. But, all right, so uh, let's uh, hop back to Yako and Mio for a bit as they uh, meet with Mr. R. Ishii, the creepy pants. Uh, the Rite of Resurrection is the inception of this whole affair. Yako and Mio decide to confront the man responsible for spreading rumors of it in the first place, Hideki Araishi. They find him at his frequent stopping grounds, the Kuro, Kuro, Kuro Kikyo Cafe. All right, weirdo. I didn't see anyone actually explain in the comments why uh, high school girls would be banned from a cafe. Hey, there's a bird. It's not very well hidden this time. Um... Yeah, I wonder. I'm guessing maybe they must sell alcohol or something, too. You know, normally be breaking school rules just by stepping foot in a cafe. I'll be in hot water if you lied about having permission from the police. Remember that. We know, it'll be okay. So, what did you want to ask me? I just want to say, hey, fuck you for killing me in that one, uh, that one game over. Also, Burr. Oh my god, mocking burp! Wow! <laughs> Taekwon burp. <laughs> uh, okay, what's this one? Sparring Sparrow Bros. Damn! <laughs> Fucking hell. Like the Karate Kids or something. Well, actually, no, nah, it's more like... I don't know, I guess like a gang thing, because he got like the, the jackets on. And the headbands. Does he have like... Do they have megaphones on their like... The back of them? I think they do, actually. Or is, that, or is it like an exhaust pipe or like a horn that you put like on a bike? That might be it. it might be like biker gang burb. Good job, burp. All right. A cafe. I've never been to one before. How exciting. It's pretty smelly inside because of the cigarette smoke, but... Oh. Oh, uh, maybe that's why. It, because people are just smoking at the wall. That's right. Remember, it's like the fucking 80s. Everybody's smoking because it's so good for you. Kuro Kikyo Cafe, a coffee shop on South Warigasui Street. Kuro Kikyo Cafe's convenient location has made it a favorite of businessmen in the neighborhood. Although formerly a relaxing location where classical and jazz music were played, the cafe has begun incorporating some pop songs into its playlist to request their customers. The class is not playing right now. The only thing I hear is the ticking of that fucking clock. It's stressing me out. The most popular menu item is a pilaf served with black coffee. Other cream soda topped with a large scoop of ice cream is also a popular choice. Fashionable cafes featuring jazz and live performances were in vogue until the mid-show era, when the number of cafes offering a carefully brewed cup of coffee in a relaxing atmosphere began to increase. Many of these locations also have public telephones, making them convenient meeting places. However, they also developed a reputation as hangout spots for delinquents, leading a large number of schools to forbid their students from patronizing them. Well, there we go, all right? I just had to wait for the game to fucking tell me. In recent years, table arcade games have become a big hit, affording cafes installing them a steady stream of customers. Gotcha. Also this. Did I, uh, did I read this already? Uh, actually, actually, I think I did read this. No, that I did. I, I did. I read this part and then updated here. Subsequent investigations revealed that the culprit was, in fact, Kan Kashiro Owai, an unemployed man. Doshigo Shiraishi, with his common-law wife and Mishio Shiraishi, their daughter, acted as accomplices. 
Kankashiro routinely used violence against both Toshiko and Michio to force them to do his bidding and is believed to coerce them into becoming accessories to the crime. Kankashiro wanted to use the boy as a living sacrifice for his magical studies, meaning that the ransom was never actually the primary motive for the ki kidnapping. The reason for targeting the Shigama family's son was due to a personal grievance. So we got any other cool shit in here? So I'm the burb. Nope, doesn't look like it. Don't give me that look. Give me that pouty face. I, I, I can't even examine you. All right, about my cursed stone. Yako, if you would. All right, we wanted to ask you about this. Check this shit out. Die, bruh! Oh my, a cursed stone? In a common mask, that must mean the fool's procession. You two were at the school last night. Damn, they of all places? Yako, you're one of them? You're a curse bearer? Yes, and you killed me. Um, uh, please calm down, Mr. Eerie. She... Your reaction is too intense. It's kind of scaring me. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm afraid I got ahead of myself. What is it you want to know about your curse stone? Hmm, what would be the best way to approach this? Flatter him. Intimidate him. Flatter him. He's, he's definitely the kind of guy he wants to be buttered up good, right? It's just a brilliant teacher like you must know an awful lot about these curse stones. Well, it's true that I'm... Likely the person most well versed in this matter. You're the only one we can count on, Mr. Ishii. Won't you help us, please? Eee! Oh, am I now? In that case, there's no harm hearing what you have to ask. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah, I knew it. Gotta butter up his ego. Why is everything with the Rite of Resurrection and Seven Mysteries curse stones happening now? Oh, taking an interest now that you've received one of the curses, have you? You sound like a researcher, starting your questioning with your subject's origins. Um, Mr. Araishi, you're not the one who triggered the curse, are you? No, I'm afraid I had nothing to do with that. Rather, I wasn't even attempting to do so in the first place. Completing the rite itself has nothing to do with my research. Then, do you know of the ancient Omiyoto ritual known as the Feast of Shadows? What is that? Something from the occult. Miss Korosuzu, you look like the type to be interested in those things, but it's outside my field of expertise. Um, in that case, why do you think the right and curses have appeared now? I believe this is the intentional work of someone. Hmm, it's certainly not something that would happen by accident. Why is it you want to know? Well, uh... He may not tell us anything if we say that we're trying to stop the curse. We need to make something up. Right. <laughs> make something up. Well, you see, we just have such intellectual curiosity and uh, think it could really help your research. I see. Now that you mention it. Seems like he's reluctant to answer. Hmm. Then how about... Ask about his research. Act disappointed. Hmm. Act disappointed. Oh, we figured you would know since you're so smart. How disappointing. How dare you! You make it sound like I'm stupid! You couldn't be more wrong! Do you realize how devoted I am to this research? Allow me to first elucidate you regarding the author of the Record of Fates. A special privilege, I might add, since I have yet to publish this in a paper. Yep. Yep, uh, this is so cool, man. I like. I'm sure the other ones would have pretty much been failure, right? Yeah. Okay. The record of fates was written 200 years ago in the latter half of the Edo period. It was written by a skilled but little-known onmyoji called Simon Tsukimikado. This is important stuff. If nothing else, remember this. Simon. Or wait. Same in. Same in. Damn it. I did it again. I'm sorry. See, when I see EI, I mean, my brain goes to the, the German pronunciation. It's Samen, right? Semen. Semen Suki. Is Suki or Suchi? Suchi? Chi. Because Mochi, right? So it's got to be Chi, yeah. Well, probably. Semen Suchi Mikado. I've never heard of him. I'm sure you haven't. He was born to a famed Omiyoji family but split away to practice forbidden arts in secret. He used whatever name was most convenient for the situation, so his real name barely exists in records. 
So it is written in the Record of Fates. Huh. As brilliant as Saban was, he was also an eccentric. He delved into researching the Rite of Resurrection, a legendary forbidden ritual that had never been completed. However, by involving himself with this forbidden ritual, he was expelled from his family and eventually found himself in Honjo and Edo. The Record of Fates are the writings Saman recorded on the road to Edo. I see. So he wrote how to perform the rite itself? The Rite of Resurrection makes use of Abe no Sem Seme Seme's specialty, the Taizan Fukun Ritual, a means of communicating with the afterlife. It uses soul dregs to replicate the soul of a dead spirit that has been called. Oh, wow. I never knew something like that existed. Thus, it is not the only ones who can use it, are those with the ability to turn human souls into soul dregs in the first place. So the Rite of Resurrection calls for that ritual to be performed in advance. Then, when the soul dregs are gathered and infused with the wish of whoever is performing the ritual, it can be completed. The contents written in the Record of Fates end there. There's no more? What about the Seven Mysteries or the Curse Stones? There's nothing written about them in the Record of Fates. The Curse Stones are separate from the Rite of Resurrection. Their curse is one used to enable one who is unable to perform such rituals to be able to use the rite. What? The curse is one to use to enable one who is unable to perform such rituals to be able to use the rite. Okay, whoa. <laughs> That's a mouthful, isn't it? So, okay, so someone who isn't able to use the rite is able to use the curses to do it. Huh, that's similar to what Mio said, actually. Yeah. The Onmyoji, an officially appointed government position with the Bureau of Onmyo in medieval Japan. Onmyoji were tasked with performing divinations and rituals. They would employ the Chinese philosophies of yin and yang and wujing, the five elements, to compose astronomical charts and almanacs. High-ranking practitioners used a variety of mystical arts, including ones that brought natural disasters and curses. Onmyoji were also tasked with exercising demons through the usage of shikigami. Omiyoji thrived during the Heian period, in part due to the work of the famous Omiyoji and later founder of the Suchi Mikado clan, Abe no Seime. However, Omiyoji began to gradually decline in number after samurai gained control of Japan. At the same time, many of their miraculous arts were lost along with the development of civilization. Although the services of Omiyoji were typically reserved for the upper class, there were a number of Shomonji, or hidden Omiyoji, who worked for the common folk. Okay, so the Rite of Resurrection. As indicated by its name, this manuscript holds the detailed instructions on how to perform the, the secret art of reviving the dead. This forbidden ritual is said to have been devised by a once famous Hanmyoji. A local researcher, Hideki Araishi, recently discovered the old manuscript and gave a presentation on it at the academic conference, sending ripples through the field of occult studies. According to the Record of Faith, this mysterious ritual was devised by the gifted Omiyoji Abe no Seme. It converts the souls of the dead bound for the underworld with soul dregs collected as sacrifices through the Taizan Fukun ritual. The secret art of com converting souls to soul dregs is out of reach to all but the most skilled practitioners. I see. So it's like, you could do it, but only if you were skill, really skilled at it. But since most people aren't, right, that's what the curse stones can do. But it seems like the curse stones are also, you know, I don't know. They mean, it seems like they're just designed also to fuck you over based on how Shogo's thing went. How are the seven mysteries related to the right? Excuse me, Mr. Ishii? What is it, Miss Kurosuzu? You published a theory before the incident took place. It said that the Rite of Resurrection and Origin of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo are related somehow. What proof did you have of that? You really know your stuff. But about that. That was a somewhat sensationalized piece written for occult magazines. Oh, really? It was just nonsense then. Not exactly. Rather, it's not a complete fabrication. There is a basis for it. And that is? Well, I suppose there's no harm telling a couple of students so passionate about this topic. Thank you. This is something I discovered from referencing numerous texts unrelated to the Record of Fates. It was just after Seimon arrived in Hanjo. There are records of a conflict over a ritual used to resurrect the dead in Hanjo. Hmm. A conflict over resurrecting the dead? 
I don't know the details. A man enticed the public with claims of a spell that could resurrect the dead, causing a conflict that ended tragically with nine dead. That is the only remaining reference. Nine people fighting over a resurrection ritual. I call this tragedy the Honjo Incident, and it has long been a subject of my research. And I suspect that this Hanjo incident might be the very origin of the seven mysteries of Hanjo. So what you're saying is, the resurrection ritual at the root of the Hanjo incident is Samon's rite of resurrection? Yes, that is how the Record of Fates ties everything together. To put it in a chronological order, first Samon brought the rite of resurrection to Edo. We can assume that by this point, Samon was likely using a different name. Then, in Hanjo, nine people fought to the death over this rite, the Hanjo Incident. Oh, so that is, so all of the mysteries, all the people and all their tragic tales were all essentially fighting over this, and that's what created it? It created these mysteries, or, it, or is it, well, I'll just keep going. After that, the incident was covered up by interest, an interested party, preventing it from, from being recorded in history fully. Eventually, it was passed down in incomplete pieces, becoming known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. That's more or less the course of events. The Hanjo Incident. During the Edo period, a chain of events that occurred around a certain resurrection spell became the basis of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Yeah, so like... So, like, let me look at this. Hanjo became known as a hot spot, number of these stories. May or likely result of people blaming things they didn't understand. Despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than 10 of these strange tales. Actually, yeah, there's more. Otherwise, like, people said there was, they said nine at one point, but look here, they say more than 10 of these. I didn't fucking make that shit up. The roots likely come from stories told by the city's common folk. Uh, most famous is the Western Canal, which eventually known as the basis. So like, but they didn't really say anything in here about that, right? Misa Soup, one day her father just appeared. I don't a bit of loneliness. Maybe the, it's people related to what happened. I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't say anything like, uh, for example, the girl who got lost. A little bear the lonely she left her home, trudged along the roads until night fell. Neither her mother nor her father were anywhere to be found. Tears stung her eyes. And then she essentially walked out in the water and died. Hmm, I don't know. I feel like we're missing something there. Or maybe it's maybe it's something unrelated to the actual people that the tale are based off of. But it's like, it's people that followed the tale or something, you know? Like, they want to revive them specifically. I, I don't know. So that's how they're connected. Then if I'm getting this right, the seven mysteries are basically required to gather the soul tricks necessary for the right. How are the seven mysteries related to the right? Here we go. I just gotta let him finish this fucking story. <laughs> and there's more. With this most recent occurrence of the curse, I've become even more confident in my theory. You are? Yes, the reason for it being the resentful memories of the seven mysteries etched into those who received the curse stones. Resentful memories? Yako, if you really are a curse bearer, then when you obtained your curse stone, you would have had resentful memory imprinted in your mind. Oh. Oh, I did! I fucking resented you! <laughs> exactly. Those mem memories are what happened in the final moments of the Nine who died in the Hanjo incident. Those memories were happened in the final moments of the Nine. So essentially when they got the curse stone, it was like, you know, murderous thoughts, you know, go into your brain like black goose or some shit. Those are essentially it. And they're like, kill, kill. Broadly speaking, they involve dying while bearing some kind of deep resentment. The Nine victims became the Nine Curse Echoes, which over time came to be spoken of as the Seven Mysteries. Thus, gathering the resentful memories granted by the present curses and connecting them together. It will reveal once and for all what happened during the Hanjo incident. Huh. That's why you must tell me about the resentful memory of your fool's procession, Yako. Ugh. Mio, should I? Yeah, I think it's okay. We need all the information we can get. All right. Okay, Mr. Ereishi, I'll tell you about the memory of the Fool's Procession. Excellent. Excellent. It's like fucking Mr. Burns. So basically, it's about a woman who died falling from a Yagara Tower at a festival. Hmm. 
Hmm, interesting. It's not that one, then. Not that one? What do you mean? Among the nine victims at the Hanjo incident, that is to say, the nine curse echoes. One of them is Seimon himself, or so I suspect. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? Seimon was one of the victims at the Hanjo incident, too? Being an Omiyoji as powerful as him also became a curse echo? Right. It would make sense that the curse stone tied to a curse echo like that would be special. The power of a curse stone is different based on the curse echo. Mio, Mio, Mio! Then maybe with Seimon's curse echo we could... Yes, we may be able to settle this whole situation. Hey! What are you two whispering about? Oh, nothing. Sorry. Wait. What are the conclusions are they coming to here? It makes sense the curse stone tied to a curse echo like that would be special. So they think that maybe with a powerful uh, curse echo like him, they could put an end to this whole uh, this whole situation, maybe? Damn, I wonder which one of the nine it is. About the resentful memories. Mr. Araishi, how many of the resentful memories have you gathered so far? I have learned a number of them. The Evergreen Beach, the Foot Washing Mansion, the Ever Burning Lantern, and now the Fool's Procession makes four. Of those, the most important are the Foot Washing Mansion and the Evergreen Beach. What are they about? First, the Foot Washing Mansion. An Omiyoji appears distinctly in this one. Really? But not Seimen, I'm afraid. A female Omiyoji who sought the right of resurrection due to her obsession with her personal appearance. Her feet! Her legs, which had, she had always taken pride in, were stricken with corruption after she was defeated by Seimon. Oh! That was not specified in here, right? Yeah, it didn't. That's why I was sort of confused by this. It seemed like a piece was missing, where it was like, This accomplished Amiyoji last she did not use her talents for the good of the world or the people, but for her own selfish pursuit of beauty. After a fierce battle, the woman dragged herself through the streets. So after a fierce battle with Seiman. That's why I was like, A fierce battle with what? Uh huh. Her curse echo is notable for being particularly easy to fulfill the requirements necessary to use the curse. That detective did well to escape this one. So a female Omiyoji and a rival of Seiman was involved in the Hanjo incident. Yes, he, he did. Because of my help, I did that. That certainly is interesting. Next, the Evergreen Beach. This curse echo is from a craftsman of the Natsuke carvings named Jinkichi, who's hanged for spreading baseless rumors. He apparently spoke of something that granted the ability to bring back the dead. The Rite of Resurrection. Precisely. This man, Jinkichi, must have been in contact with Seiman. If I could just collect all of the memories, everything will be revealed, and the truth of the seven mysteries will be mine. That is the knowledge I desire. I see. Yeah, so, so like, that connection, that is, that, that, the questions I'm asking are exactly the answers he's looking for, right? Those are the questions he's also, he's also asking. Where it's like, how, how is it all connected? Meaning you need to gather as much information as you can from the curse bearers. Precisely. I have an agreement to exchange information with those detectives. But they might not even find the other curse bearers, so I must take measures of my own. What's the trigger for the curse to occur? Another thing. Yes. You never really finished about what the trigger for all of this was. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. Really? You're not hiding something from us, are you? It's something to do with how you obtained the Record of Fates, right? Oh. How did you really get a hold of the Record of Fates? To tell you the truth, we're in a race against time. It could be a disaster if we don't hurry. What are you talking about? Someone left a warning that at sundown today, they would use the curse to kill a lot of people. The one who left that message is the culprit behind the Nejima murders from 20 years ago. What? Something so terrible will happen? I won't allow potentially hundreds of people to become victims of a curse. I'll do anything in my power to stop it. Mr. Ariishi, please! Tell us everything you know! I'm sorry, but I truly don't know anything. The truth is, I was given the record of fates by a woman. A woman? 
Well, her voice sounded like a woman's, but I didn't actually see what she looked like. One month ago, while I was investigating at night, I suddenly heard a formless voice. A woman's voice? It said, I entrust you with this ancient manuscript and the right of resurrection held within its pages. Spread rumors of this ritual as far and wide as you can in the coming month. Oh, well, that's interesting. So he was picked specifically to do this. Probably because they knew that he would too, right? He was the kind of person to do that. Hmm. And before I knew it, an old document had fallen down at my feet. <laughs> wow, this is like this is like some fucking death. There's so much death note shit in this this story too. That fit like does like then suddenly the fucking death note fell by my feet and <laughs> damn it, these goddamn demons, freaking Shimigami. One month. She specified the time period. I was told if I did that, I could study the manuscript as much as I pleased. I wanted so badly to verify its authenticity. I ended up accepting. I haven't heard anything from the voice since then. It must have had you spread rumors in order to strengthen the power of the curse. To tie together the curse and the desire to seek out the right. Ah. This makes it likely that the owner of the voice is the mastermind behind all of this. Is it fucking Juko again? Hence, I went public with the record of fates. Kyaku in occult magazines immediately jumping at the news was a financial boon for me. Huh? Hihaku? As in Hihaku soaps? Right. I, I mean, no. This is not important. Just some personal business. Oh. He's dodging. After that, I waited, trying to predict what would occur in a month's time. That's when the curse began. I'm almost wondering if perhaps, perhaps then the, the mastermind is actually this crazy bitch right here. I'm chairman of this company. I don't know. Will she, like, go out of her way to sell this shit in motion? She also wants to use the, the rights of and stuff, and even though seemingly she doesn't actually have any, you know, spiritual power of her own, which is why she's going to, well, she maybe would go to the trouble of having the rumor spread to strengthen it and make it possible for normal people to do this. That's when the curse began. Those are all the details I have. Anything else? Farewell. I've told you this much. I may as well give you one more thing. Thank you. What might that be? About Saman's Record of Fates. There is a sort of continuation to it. Another document called the Record of Fates Yin Scroll. A continuation? Actually, a section written in Saman's own hand was appended to the manuscript. According to which, after the Hanjo incident, Saman lamented such a calamity taking place. He apparently wrote the addendum for the event that the tragedy became its own curse. Wait, so Saman, after the Hanjo incident, he lamented that such a tragedy took place, even though he's one of the... I thought he was part of the Hanjo incident. He wrote the addendum for the event that the tragedy became its own curse. It seems he had an idea that the victims of the Hanjo incident would turn into curse echoes and be used to gather soul dregs. It supposedly details how to handle any trouble that occurs as a result of the Rite of Resurrection. Really? Hold on a second. Don't you find that strange? What's the matter, Miss Sakazaki? You think my information inaccurate? If Saman died in the Hanjo incident, then he could- Yes! Thank you, Yako! Okay, good! I'm not like- I'm like, am I, am I, am I fucking up again? Am I not like keeping- <laughs> Yeah, if he died, he, how, how can he wrote, write it? He was fucking dead! If Saman died in the Hanjo incident, then he couldn't have- Written an addendum. You really don't get it, do you? Huh? Am I wrong? Have you forgotten the ability Saman possessed? Of course not. He could use the right of re res. Oh, you're telling me Saman used it on himself? The right of resurrection can be carried out in advance, so it activates when the soul dregs are gathered together. Oh. Then is it not possible that Saman himself was resurrected by the right? After it all took place. But you still have to collect the soul dregs need to use the right. Yes, and that's why they died. The eight others besides Saman. What? They died in the Hanjo incident for their soul dregs? That sounds like it's the same as what's happening now. That's why I need the resentful memories to learn the truth. I get it now. The issue at hand is that the Yin Scroll and the Record of Fates were supposed to have been passed down as a set. When I received the Record of Fates, the Yin Scroll was gone. Only this information was left. 
Supposedly, Saemon's blood descendants guarded it as they passed it down across generations. It seems that over their long history, the two documents became separated and the scroll's location lost as the family line branched. Saemon had descendants? So there's someone out there related to him by blood even now? Yes. In fact, I've tried to trace that line as far as I could. He wasn't a well-known Omiyoji to begin with, so a detailed family tree does not exist. It seems likely that the use of the manuscripts has been long forgotten, only being passed down out of tradition. And since they aren't even aware of what they have, tracking it down is quite tricky indeed. I wish I could ask whoever that voice belonged to about the Yin Scroll. I'm sure you do. So, basically, in the Record of Fate's Yin Scroll, Saman himself wrote about ways to handle the curse and the right, yes? Yes, that's right. I've been searching for it all this time, but I haven't found a single lead. So, if you two find out anything about other resentful memories or Yin Scroll, tell me immediately. You owe me that much for telling you all this, do you not? That's the real extent of everything I know. Well, I mean, he told us a lot. This guy's a shithead, but at least he gave us a lot of information. Uh, it said that Samon Tsuchi Mikado, author of the Record of Fates, wrote the Yin Scroll because he feared that the descendants of those involved in the Hanju incident might become cursed and used in the collection of soul dregs for the Rite of Resurrection. Descendants, huh? So, does that mean we're all descendants or something? We don't realize it? Or some bullshit? The existence of the Yin Scroll is indicated in a postscript added to the Record of Fates, but its whereabouts are currently unknown. It's believed to have been inherited by a descendant of Samon. Uh, an old manuscript, or I was trusted to him. Oh, uh, Hideki Iraishi claimed he found it in the storehouse of an old private residence, but it was in fact entrusted to him by a mysterious voice. The manuscript was written by Samon Tsuchimikado and Onmyoji from the Edo period. He was an extraordinary practitioner, but after being banished from his family for researching forbidden arts, he changed his name and moved to Edo. Yes, I understand. Thank you for your help. If you bring me some useful information, I'll take it into consideration for your school grades as well. <laughs> this guy's such a shithead. Okay. Well, it was still fruitful. We learned things. We've learned a lot. That's why I just fucking set me up. So to sum it up, there was a tragic incident with people cursing each other for the Rite of Resurrection in the Edo period as well. And the Record of Fates, Yin Scroll, may have info we want. This is details how to stop the Rite. I think that's about it. Right. If we could just find the Yin Scroll, we might be able to learn how to settle this situation. But even Mr. Araishi didn't have any leads on where it is. How do we start looking for it? Ooh, I said with the pouty fair. Ooh! Someone involved in this now must have some connection to it, I think. Did you just look at me when she said that shit? Or she looked right right into the fucking camera when she said that? I have a feeling the mastermind who wakened the curse is involved too. Right. Yeah, Yako's looking at me too. Uh, about what to do next. So, Neo, what are we gonna do next? Good question. It may be best to give the information we just learned to Inspector Susumi. We got a pretty big clue from hearing about the record of Fates Yin Scroll. Mr. Susumi might know more about it. Should we go back to the school then? Yeah, that's our point of contact after all. Whoever's behind that voice that gave Mr. Araishi the record of Fates? That must be the mastermind, don't you think? Yeah, and he said it sounded like it belonged to a woman. Whoever it is, I bet they're scary. Huh? He doesn't sound like the Yako I know. Then let's catch him and make him spill the beans. I thought you'd say something like that. Really? I guess I'm just not really feeling that confident right now. I understand. Well, with me and my fucking demon powers, that could turn me into a psycho at any moment. I don't know if it's related to that woman behind the voice, but I'm also interested in the female Omiyoji who was a rival of Samon. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, Mio. You know what's nearby here, don't you? Hmm? Oh, you mean where Mishio? Where Michio? Yeah, where it happened. I was going there every day to leave flowers, even though they always get cleared away anyways. I'm sure it must be hard to have to be reminded of Mishio's death all the time. Oh, that reminds me. Yako? 
Yeah? When you asked me to do the spirit board two days ago, did you come here that day too? Yeah, I left some flowers before going to school. Why? Do things seem different that day? What's this all of a sudden? Though, now that you mention it, that day, I suddenly felt lightheaded and ended up passing out for a little bit. Oh. But I came to you right away and felt fine, so I didn't think anything of it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was when she got possessed by Mishia, right? More than likely. And Mio, Mio is totally onto that. I think Mio is totally aware of actually what's happening. I think that's exactly why, too, that she didn't hand over that curse stone to Susumi. Because she said, I want to I wanna verify something, right? I see. That's all I was wondering about. Thanks. Hmm? Uh, excuse me, you girls over there. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, but he doesn't have his curse stone anymore, so we, sh we should be fine. Whoa. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Something you said caught my attention. Um, and who might you be? I'm Yutaro Namagaki. Er, I should probably tell you. Until yesterday, I was a curse bearer. That should clear things up. A curse bearer? Oh, you don't need to be scared. I've already given up the curse stone of the foot washing mansion. This guy's always been weirdly upfront about everything. The foot washing mansion? So you're the one Inspector Susumi was talking about? Ah, you already know Inspector Susumi. That makes this simple. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, hey. You're in the driver's seat. Uh-oh. Yep. Yako? Y yes? W wait, what? Just now I was... Was I doing something? Oh. Yeah, Michio is still in there, and that's a memory of hers, right? And she keeps blanking out. So Namagaki and that other woman that he was with are the ones that ran her over? Was it just an accident? Was it actually like a hit and run? It's interesting though, if Mio is onto the factor, suspects that Yako is possessed, I wonder why she isn't like trying to exercise her. Uh, sorry, Mr. Namagaki, what might be the matter? Right, I actually wanted to discuss something with you two. Would you come with me if you have a little time? Discuss something with us? You were talking about Mishio Shira Ishii, right? It's related to that. Huh? I'm sure you would learn a few things yourselves. If not, later is fine. I'll be waiting around Ryugoku Bridge. Something rubs me the wrong way about this, but you mentioned Mishio. What do we do? Talk to Yutaro. Go to the school first. I feel like I think he's trying to fuck us over here. I think he's trying to steal my stone. Sorry, but there's something we ain't got to take care of. We'll have to pass. Oh. Is that so? Well, that's too bad. I'm in no rush, so I'll be winging at Ryugoku Bridge if you change your minds. Oh. Oh. Well, that's interesting. But wait, there's more. All right, let's see what happens. I suppose we may as well hear what it is you have to say. Glad to hear it. Then shall we relocate elsewhere? This could lead to a game over, or at least a split in the path here, maybe. I, I think it's gonna be like he's gonna be with that woman. And they're gonna like steal the cur try like knock us out and steal our curse stone or some shit. Whatever this is, I think it's gonna lead to some to a bad ending of some kind. So, what do you want to discuss with us? Let's see. How do I put this? I'll tell you straight. I want you two to use your curse stones to bring Mishio Shiraishi back from the dead. What? It's why I was pursuing the rite of resurrection in the first place. Unfortunately, I had to give up my curse stone before I could succeed. But you two are curse bearers with some kind of connection to her. Which means that this is the perfect opportunity for me to ask you for this. Oh. So he accidentally runs her over, at least seemingly accidentally. And then... So his his desire is to bring her back as well, amazingly enough. To, to ease his guilty conscience, perhaps? Um, well... I'm sorry. This is all so sudden. I still don't understand why you would want this. What exactly is your relationship with Michiel? Well... We met briefly once. 
I was so sad to hear the news of her death the other day. Right. Well, it would be great if we could bring Michio back. But we've already decided not to use the Rite of Resurrection. Is that so? It seems, however, that we share a goal. I wouldn't mind collecting the soul dregs for you if you gave me your curse stone, you know. We'll have to decline that as well. Our goal is to stop this curse. Uh-oh. I see. Well, that's too bad. I suppose I'll have to give up on the curse stones. Thank you for your understanding. Whew. Thought he was a little suspicious, but he left without making a fuss. But why does he want to bring Michio back? Uh-oh. Huh? Iako? Uh-oh. Did she go off somewhere while we were talking? Possessed Yakio, right? Or, or possessed Yako? Uh oh, she she gonna follow him? Yeah. Heh, <laughs> I finally caught up to you. I don't know if you noticed me following you or not, but leading me to a secluded place. You've got guts. I'm sorry, but I'll be taking your curse stone. Either you hand it over, or I'll have to take it by force. <laughs> by putting my hands in the air. Look! Booga, 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 booga. What? Oh. Freaky. So her whole fucking face turns into to her too? Wh why? Are you? No. No, no. She's here again. I, I don't understand. Ah, ah, ah. W wait. It was just an accident. I swear, I didn't mean to! Th that's why I was trying to bring you back! Oh. <gasps> You're already... too late. Oh, I thought I was gonna say, you were already dead. <gasps> what?! Oh, that's an ending? The end. Clearly, that was the true ending. Well, guys, that was a great game. I don't know about you. I think it was. I think it was pretty, pretty damn great. The ending was still a little bit of a cop out. It felt like maybe there should have been more to it. But you know, what, what can you do, man? This is it. We couldn't literally do nothing else in the whole game, all right? I know those other two scenarios there, but that's just fucking bullshit. Clearly, this is the true ending, and I guess this is the end of the let's play. All right, guys. See you later. Have a good one. Bye bye. Remember to like and subscribe, and remember. To fucking uh, smash the fuck of that like button and also subscribe again. And also, oh wait. After this, Fuma, Chika, and Ejima went on to use the power of his cursor to commit mass murder, shocking the public with the unprecedented tragedy. And, <laughs> and so everybody died at the end. Way to go, shithead. And from that day on, Yako Sakazaki was never heard from again. Ending one, Mishio's grudge i was gonna say did she, did she like actually kill him like i was thinking with her curse stone but i think the curse stone actually doesn't work if she's knows that they're th the person is there right i believe it's basically like the the foot washing one but like way worse because you also have to be stealthy and it takes like 30 seconds to kick in but yeah so there we go there, there's the clarification is exactly what i thought yeah yako is possessed by michio mio seems pretty sure of it as well we uh, probably should do something about that. All right, uh, Haraway or Tetsuo? Uh, we spent a lot of time with uh, Haraway last one, so let's go back to Tetsuo. At the Sarishi house, Susumi and Ereo learn the truth about many things, including the death of Kon Kishiro Awaii. They hurry to the high school after learning that Mishio Shiraishi knew the whereabouts of Nejima's hideout. Oh wait, is this coinciding with... I think it is, yeah. They're going back to high school and I think it's really gonna run to us. Boss, I just talked to the Sumida police. Oh, what now? They found an abandoned van in the Shiba Mountains that looked like it had been in an accident. They couldn't lift any fingerprints from it, but they found blood splatters on the on the front. 
Ah, well, there we go. No, I could just say it was an accident. Wow. A very unfortunate accident has led to quite a bit of, uh, <laughs> of damage post-mortem there. Man, you ran over the wrong girl, Namagaki. And guess what? The blood is a perfect match for Michio's. Uh-huh. So it must be the van that hit Michio. You got it. It's all thanks to Yashimi that we were able to find that out. The license plate had been removed, though, and they even scraped off the vehicle identification number. Uh, it'll take a while to identify the owner. Now they're trying to figure out if the van was sighted anywhere between the scene of the crime and where it was dumped. Got it. Thanks for the report. But more importantly, is there a bird around here? Yes, there is. Hey there, burb. Is that a mallard? I think it is. Oh, fuck yeah. Taekwon mallard. <gasps> Quackitude! Oh! That's awesome. I guess quack... Like solitude? Quackitude? <laughs> I guess? I don't know, but he looks... He looks dope. These birds are awesome. I want to find a real mallard and dress him up just like that. Uh, it's nice that we got permission to use the school as our base of operations. The principal and that teacher were a little reluctant at first, but they were convinced that it helped the investigation. Dealing with all this must be a real headache for those guys. I should think of again later. Or if I fucking remember and I'm not dead. I guess we still can't rule out the possibility that Michio did commit suicide. She was so young. And all the adults in her life did, did was push her around. Yeah, seriously, I mean, I thought she'd have a good fucking reason with... All the absolute horrid shit that happened to her. He still doesn't look tired after all this running around. Which I still had all that stamina. By the way, boss. We confirmed that Michio died in a vehicular co collision. But are we sure that it was really an accident? Good question. I was wondering the same thing. The damage done by the collision in case that the driver was traveling at a considerable speed. There were no brake marks to be found. Exactly. Which suggests they may have been intentionally targeting Michio. Hmm. So maybe not maybe Nabagaku was full of shit then. As he fucking was dying. But why? Well, like why the fuck? Yeah, then what was the motive, you think? Who would have a reason to kill Michio? The first person that comes to mind is Kankashiro Wai. After all, she knew about his crimes. But then Awai was supposedly able to control Michio by intimidation alone. There's also that teacher who was taking advantage of Michio, Kohei Junuchi. But to say he killed her to stop people from finding out that he was blackmailing her doesn't seem likely somehow. You're right. Though both of them have fallen prey to a curse. That's true. In that case, it's quite possible she also decided to exact revenge on the person who ran her over. Not just possible. She may have already done it last night, just like with Hawaii. Is there anything else that should that could have served as a motive? A talisman, maybe? The one Yashimi was looking for? Oh! Do you think someone wanted to take it from her? Well, the talisman wasn't found in her remains, nor in her house. Hmm. But doesn't a hit and run seem like too drastic a measure to go to for a little talisman? Then in the end, it might have just been an unfortunate accident after all. Yeah, it looks that way. Either way, what we need now is a testimony from Michio herself. With a bit of luck, we may be able to ask her what happened during the crash ourselves. Yeah, I can't wrap my head around that particular development. I still have my doubts that it'll be so easy. Either way, we won't be able to do this unless Mio and Yako turn up. I'd rather have them come sooner rather than later, but... I guess we just have to wait. Should we head inside? All right, then. Boss, I thought we were going away from Mio in the school. I know, but I want to get all your dialogue. Uh, hey, Areo, I wanted to ask you something. Aye, aye, boss. Jeez, you're an eager beaver. Eager beaver. That means seven was yet. Right. Well, what is it then? Can't remember what you had for dinner last night? Looks like that agent over there is having some trouble with his pen. So if you got a spare, go lend it to him. And for the record, I had concert on last night. No need to worry about me going senile just yet. Uh, I know I look like a genius, but I didn't think I came across as the type to carry spare pens on my person. You a genius? You're dreaming. But if his pen just stopped working, 
You can get it going again with a bit of nail polish remover. Nail polish remover? Yeah, you know, what you used to remove nail polish. Never used it before? Do I look like I would have? <sighs> Don't make me so crazy for not having used the stuff. I doubt you have either. Oh, no, I used it all right. Did you know they can remove oil-based ink stains? Which is also why it can be used to fix old dried up pen nibs. Whatever's in there that removes the ink also doubles as a way to unclog pens. Huh, good to know. Still, I wouldn't call you a genius, but it's something. You gotta make sure the remover doesn't mix with the ink, though, or it'll ruin it. Does that defeat the purpose? Not to mention, I don't have nail polish remover on me right now anyway. Oh, no problem then. That doesn't fix anything. Long story short, I don't have a spare pen. Jeez. All right, I'll let him know. <laughs> that was interesting, that was highlighted too. Hmm. I feel like it's gonna come into play. Like that, that the word nail polish remover was highlighted. It does seem kind of unusual. All right, let's go way inside the school. I'm sure they'll be here any moment. <laughs> any minute now. And so they waited forever. And there we go. <laughs> I'll see you again. Well, what the hell is she is? Okay, so we keep this uh, gravy uh, train going. The record of fate's yin scroll may contain a way to put a stop to the curse. Yako and Mio head back to Kamagata High School to share this information with Susumi. Ain't that interesting. The record of face in scroll, huh? Thank God you guys showed up. I was really gonna stand here and I was gonna be like, and so these two dipshits went inside and never fucking solved the case and then Nejima murdered everybody and everybody died at the end. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. <laughs> Thankfully that didn't happen. Thanks, Nico. That's right, I'm looking at you right now. Hi, yes, I'm looking at you too, Susumi. That's right, I see you. I see you too. Yeah, I see you. Why are you surprised? I don't know. Why I should why I gonna how can I be surprised by anything in this game? All this crazy shit happening, nothing surprises me anymore. In the right or real. Yeah! Woo! Fourth wall breaking! Well done, you two. That's some good info you got from that teacher. Thank you. Good job, boss. Operation Schoolgirl was a success. Rayo, stop making things sound weird. Anyway, let's share what we found at Michio Shirishi's house. Yes, please. Oh, boy, it's a doozy. Yes. A man in Hawaii? Kidnapped sacrifices for black magic? And Michio helped with the kidnapping? And Mr. Janucci used that to blackmail her? Yes, this is exactly all the things I just said to you. Repeat it out loud. About Michio Shirishi. Based on that report and looking at the circumstances surrounding the deaths of Janucci in Hawaii, if Michio Shirishi did it, it would make sense. Furthermore, there are signs that Michio Shirishi wanted someone to notice. Huh? Really? The ribbon that was left at the scene of Kohei's death is proof of that. Mio, I'm guessing you knew that already. Ah, uh, yes. Ever since this morning. But there's one piece of information I need. But I think we're near her limit. What? Oh. Oh, she fuck. Okay. All right. We're near her limit, huh? Y did you see Yako question mark there too? Is she possessed currently? She's like not saying anything. Actually, has she said anything? No, she did. She said thank you. But I think we're near her limit. Oh, I see. We got to finish the other ones and come back to that. Yeah, she's going to. I think she's going to confront her here. But the record of face in scroll. So, if we get this record of fate's yin scroll, we'll be able to dispel the curse. Yes, the source of this curse is a tragic event called the Hanju Incident that dates back to the Edo period. An old Miyoji named Seimen Tsuchi Mikado is said to have recorded a way to deal with the curse. So I think there may be a way to dispel the curse. Alright. I'll leave out a process to you, Mio. Now check with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau as well. But please make finding the record of fate's yin scroll your top priority. Understood. Hope Mio gets a fucking spinoff from this game. She's cool. But how do we go about looking for it? It's possible that the descendants of Saiyan have inherited it, but I don't think they're aware of its existence. It'd be nice if we had a clan crest or something to go off of. Maybe we'll have to ask Paranormal Affairs. That reminds me. 
Mio, was the Western black magic used by Awai and Nejima really just an imitation? Huh? Why are you asking me? Oh, uh, uh boss said that you knew about this sort of thing. Do, do you not? Um, well, I mean, I have some knowledge, but... How strange. I don't think I've ever told anyone that. It's okay, Mio. No one's judging you. <laughs> right. So feels a little weird. <laughs> Everyone just assumes because she just has that look about her, right? So what's your opinion on it as someone familiar with Western black magic? Hmm. If I could have a look at their, their grimoire, I could be sure, but based on their methods, I say they imitated black magic popular around 300 years ago. It was advertised as magic anyone could use and was employed as camouflage to evade witch hunters. It's notable because they're they purposely required living sacrifices to make it difficult to disprove its authenticity. Wow, you know so much. I'm impressed. It totally matches with the vibe you've got going on. L what do you mean by that? Don't worry, have some confidence. Um, right. Th thanks. I guess? <laughs> if that black magic is just an imitation, then we probably don't have to worry about it. I'm just glad things aren't getting even more confusing than they already are. <laughs> I'm just glad this plot isn't any more confusing than it could potentially become. <laughs> All right, about the mastermind. All right, about the mastermind. I had an idea. Huh? What is it? It's about the chairwoman of Yaku Soaps, isn't it? You mentioned her when you were telling us about that Hawaii person. Yeah, see, so they think about think what I was thinking too. Yep. Where are the goals to restore youth or to resurrect someone? She's got her hands all over this. She has money too. It also matched Hideki Araishi's account of a woman's voice. An evil business lady with supernatural powers. A classic setting. If only we could confirm those powers of hers were actually real. We'll need to keep an eye on her. I'll tell HQ to look into her. All right. Now then. For nearing the limit. Now stop beating around the bush. Time to tell it to you straight. Hyako Sagazaki. What? Me? Y yes? Take out your curse stone and give it to Mio. My curse stone? It's just been in my pocket all this time. Thanks. I'm just going to bar for a second. Oh. Oh, interesting. Seems, uh, Susumi was aware of it as well. Well? Yes. There are soul tricks inside, after all. What? How did this happen? I didn't do anything! I, I swear! You have to believe me! It's okay. We know. Yako, calm down and listen to what I'm about to tell you. B but There's no mistake that Janucci and Hawaii were killed by that curse stone. But the one who committed the act is... The ghost of Mishio Shiraishi is inside you, Yaka Sagazaki. What? What? Inside me? What? What do you mean? What do you mean? It's okay, Yako. Please calm down and listen. You've been possessed, Yako. By Mishio's ghost. I'm gonna fucking blast it out of you! Eat this bitch! Boom! What? It probably happened when you were offering flowers to the site of the accident. Filled with regret, her lingering ghost reacted to the presence of her old friend and entered you, Yako. No way. You mean Michio's ghost is inside me? I've explained this once before. But just because you've been possessed doesn't mean that you lose control of yourself. Normally, the mind will reject such attempts and will do nothing more than affect one's mood or energy levels. But Michio had powerful spirits to begin with. Oh. And because she was your friend, your mind was open to accepting Michio's spirit. So for those reasons, your minds merged without any issues. It's going to be difficult to separate her from you at this point, which also means it will be difficult to guide her to the her spirit to the afterlife. No way. We've merged? Me and Michio's minds are... They are one. But I don't feel different at all. I mean, I'm... Me, I think. 
That's because after she merged with you, Mishio started to believe she was you as well. As a ghost possessing you, she's not fully conscious, only really a jumble of vague memories. Still, there are traces of her consciousness and memories of Mishio Shiraishi. You have been acting a little bit different from usual. Ah. Ah, that's why her reaction to some things were also like us to say, hey, it's not the thing you would say. Yeah. She's been picking it. This is so cool, man. I think if we probably were to go back even to like the earlier scenes, we'd probably pick up even more moments where she was clearly like noticing something about Yako, right? And that us as the player weren't really picking up on you because we didn't have nearly enough information. Uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad at least I was able to figure this one out, you know? I think with like relatively early, once you brought up the possession thing, I was like, oh, I, see, I get what's happening. You know, sometimes react when coming into contact with things with a powerful influence. R really? That having been said, if we don't have a proper understanding of the regrets Mishio Shiraishi had when she died, and why, it would be difficult to separate her from you. That's why I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. Oh. If I carelessly provoked your ghost, it could have risked causing her to dig even deeper into your mind. Oh, okay. Oh no. When we mentioned limits earlier, we mean that by letting things proceed like this, there's a possibility that you will join completely making it impossible to separate our ghosts from you. If that happens, you'll never be able to tell which of your thoughts belong to her and which belongs to you. Oh, I see. That's what she's saying. She's, yeah. Yako is reaching her limit, I, I think. Yeah. What? That's so scary. You mean I won't be myself anymore? Oh, but if it's Michio, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Oh, I don't know. What should I do? But? Uh, but? It was actually Michio who used the curse stone while I was unaware, wasn't it? Doesn't that mean her ghost has already taken over my body? Well, about that. I think that's probably the effect of the curse amplifying murderous impulses and the influence of the Feast of Shadows. While you were sleeping, the ghost's powers were boosted. And strengthened by the feast, Michio's consciousness surfaced and took control of your body. That's... Then, that means... I was the one who killed them? I cursed them both! <gasps> Yakum, no! You are being controlled! Red Inspector? No, you're going to jail, kid! <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like, likely she'd be recognized as not being responsible for the crime due to the possession. It's not something you can control. No need to worry about that. No, you're wrong. I wanted to kill them too. Those feelings must have come out. It's not only Michio's fault. I mean, when I learned that Michio didn't commit suicide, I wish that all the cruel adults around me would just die. I had the curse still with me and I wanted to get revenge for Michio if the chance came. That's how I felt. Kyako. Because, because, Mishu wasn't able to escape her terrible situation. It was so hard. It wouldn't be unusual for someone to take their own life. And I, I had this curse stone. I made Mishu get revenge all by herself. Mishu tried so hard to keep on living in silence. And I treat those feelings like they were worthless. I should have done it myself right away. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Michio. Ah, ah. Uh-oh. Get out of my head, Michio. That's why. I killed them. Oh. Yako. There you are. Oh, hi, Michio. What's up with you? You'd be worried sick since you haven't been coming to school lately. Feels like it's been forever. I'm glad you seem to be doing good. Yeah, sorry. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you why. I've always regretted it. Aw, oh, come on. You're acting like we aren't buds. You tell me if anyone's making you sad, and I'll take care of them. <laughs> Thanks, Yako. Actually, 
I'm here because there's something I want to tell you. Really? What's the matter? You could tell me anything. Well, the truth is, I did something unforgivable to an innocent man. Saying that I was forced to and didn't have a choice that doesn't undo it. I'm sorry. I feel so guilty. What? I've done so much I can't take back. All well, because I was weak. There's no escaping the hell that I've created for myself. I couldn't handle it anymore. I started thinking about killing him and dying myself. Neither of us deserve to live in this world. What? But something went wrong, and that's why I died with regrets. But thanks to you, I finished what I wanted to do. Thank you. And I'm sorry for dragging you into this. What about Namagaki? We still gotta kill his ass. What? Wait, you don't need to apologize. It's only now that I realize. And I know how selfish it is. Oh. But I hope you remember the time we spent together as friends. And how we were able to be together at the end. Please, don't forget me. Huh? No! Amicia, wait! Huh? Did she exercise her? Or, or did she actually just leave her, her own will? That, I mean, she saw what hap was happening with Yako and felt bad. Huh? You're awake. Do you feel okay? I'm sorry I had to spring that all on you, Yako. What? Is this... Are we in the classroom? Huh? Was I... Dreaming? I'm sorry to rush this along while you're still gathering your feelings, but... We need to hear what Mishio Shirishi has to say. Now. R right And so, after considering what to do... It is true that Mishio's consciousness has mixed with yours. But if I summon her ghost... We may be able to establish some communication. Oh, I understand. Oh. So you thought to use the spirit board again? Yep, I have a hunch. I think the spirit we called last night may have actually been Michio herself. Oh, really? Really? You think? And that her spirit has been close to you ever since then. Then let's do it. I think we should. And I want to hear from her. Very well. I have no idea if this will work during daytime, but let's give it a try. Yeah, it's gonna be dark and scary. Are you ready? Hold on a minute. Sorry, I need a little time. No, it's okay. Let me know when you're ready. Thanks. I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Wait, I want to look around the room for burbs. That's why I said not yet. Do you remember how to do it? Place your finger on the ten yen coin. Eh. <sighs> It, uh. Right, like this. Good. Now do as I do. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. <laughs> oh, man, let me be goofy this time. Please tell us if you are there. Yas, Queen, yas. It's here. Now, is it the spirit of Mishio? Yako, would you ask the spirit? All right. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, are you the spirit of Mishio Shiraishi? Yas. Ah, it said yes. Don't be so sure. So the spirits like to play tricks. Can you try asking a question only Mishio would know the answer to? Question only Mishio would know the answer to. Let's see, then. Oh. Spectre of the Spirit Board, how much did the ribbon I bought with Mishio cost? Four ninety. Four hundred ninety yen. That's right. Well, it seems you have the right spirit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no one has to be, be here for hours trying to find the right one. Okay, can I have, have you ask her a question? Okay, what do you want me to ask her? I want you to ask about the location of Fumichika and Ejima's hideout, and the location of the talisman as well. Okay. 
Where is the hideout? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Please tell me the location of Fumichika and Najima's hideout. Please, terrible things will happen if, they, if he isn't captured soon. I'm sure it's painful to try and remember, but you're the only one who can help us, Michio. Please! So is, is the spirit actually out of her body at this point? Or is it still in her body and that's actually what's having her move the coin? I, I don't know. It's not like Michio had left after that last scene. Oh. It moved! This is an address. She's giving us the address. Amazing. Thank you, Michio. Good job, Michio. Okay, I have the address. Thank you. All right, Aurelio. Get a move on and check out that address. Yes, sir. I'll contact HQ and order a simultaneous house search and sweep of the area. Huzzah! I just hope the information is accurate. I know it is. All right, the talisman. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Do you know where the talisman that you had is? Okay, yes. She does know. I wonder if we can find a way to narrow it down. I'll try asking. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Did you carry around the talisman with you at all times? Does Namagaki have it? So she did carry it with her. Then, did you have it with you when you had your accident? Yeah. Huh? She had it with her. But there was something resembling a talisman in the article set behind at the scene. So that means someone took it with them and ran off with it before the scene was investigated. But who would do that? This would mean someone knew Michio had died before the police did. The first person to discover or report it was the caretaker of the apartment building next door. Should we check with them? Let's see. The other possibility I can think of is... The perpetrator of the hidden run. Yeah. But it was a hidden run. Wouldn't they have run away? It might be possible they came back, driven by fear or something else. Even if so, they didn't report it and went through her belongings. But don't they take the talisman? Seems hard to believe. Unless they were after the talisman from the very beginning. How likely is that? If the tal talisman really is so special. Areo mentioned the same thing. But to run someone over just to take something from them. It's possible that they just picked up the talisman after hitting her for no particular reason. Either way, if it really was a hidden run, then I hope they get caught. It's possible she remembers something after seeing that picture of the car. Then, shall we try asking? I'll try. Who was responsible for the hidden run? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Do you know who was behind the hidden run? Yes. She says she knows. That's a relief. If she hadn't known. Huh? In order for Michio's spirit to find peace, we need as much detailed information about what happened as possible. We can't send her off to the afterlife if we don't know what happened to her to happen when she died. This isn't like a forced exorcism. Huh. So that's what it'll take. All right. I'll try asking. Right. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Who was the one who... Ran you over. Up she knows the name. I wonder. Namagaki. N A M I G A K I. Namagaki? Huh? Namagaki? What? You mean Yutaro Namagaki? You two know him. We talked with him after we left the cafe. He used to be a curse bearer, right? Ah, I see. So that's why Yako had that reaction when she saw him. What? Come to think of it, that guy said he wanted to talk about Michio. What? The hell is he playing without his curse stone? He said he'd be waiting near Ryugoku Bridge. Got it. I'll join you there once we're done. 
He's the bastard who killed Michio? Yako. Should be enough information. We can release Michio from her suffering now. Let's do it. All right. It's time to be free. Oh, say goodbye. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. No. Michio. Thank you. You helped us. You know? I'm so sorry I didn't know about it all. Your family. The kidnapping. Mr. Danucci. I'm so sorry. It must have been so hard. Not that I could understand. But I'm sure it was so hard. I mean, of course you would want revenge. I wanted it too. We've all done things that we wish we could take back. But I'm glad that I at least know the truth. Yako, there's so much I want to say, but that's enough. Let me just ask you one last thing. Someday, can we hang out again? Oh. You mean it? Okay. It's a promise. Have you asked everything you wanted? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get Mishio's spirit now. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye. Yeah, so is still in there. Mishio? With this, I won't be able to free you. Hey, Yako. Yeah? You never accepted the idea that Michio took her own life. I'm glad you never stopped trying to find the truth. Yeah. You're right. Even though I didn't realize just how hard things were for her. Mio? Aww. Sorry. It's just... Michio. She was taken advantage of by so many of the adults around her. She put up with so much. I should have tried and talked with her more. Aww. I know how you feel. Thanks, Mio. It hurts thinking about all the things I could have done. Why did this have to happen? Someone so kind and hardworking. Feels like she was ill-fated to the very end. It's just too cruel. But even then, she didn't even tell me about this stuff. And she left, let herself worry more about revenge than living. I'm mad at her for that. Sure, I should have known something was wrong. But come on! <laughs> what was she thinking? Seriously! I mean, seriously! Am I really that unreliable? Of course I'd help you get your revenge, you idiot! I don't care if you changed or whatever! I just wanted you to live! Yako. I'll take responsibility for what's been done. But one day, if we meet on the other side, I'm gonna have to give her a good punch. Then I'll tell her she's the real fool's procession. Or something. Then we'll hang out, like always. Eh, <laughs> sounds like fun. Alright. I'm sending her off, okay? Oh, wait. Look, the coin. It moved to no on its own. You're right. When did it do that? It seems she still has something keeping her here. Yako, do you have any idea about what Michio wants? Me? Oh. Please. Don't forget me. Oh. I think she told me that she didn't want me to forget. I see. Then. Michio? If you can hear my voice. Let your feelings that you won't ever forget her be known. Show it through an action. What? Do something that shows you won't forget. Uh. 
clicking. <gasps> Save? <gasps> oh my god, this game's fucking amazing! <laughs> I saved it in a new slot. Thank you. Well, I don't really want you to punch me. So live a long life, okay? I'll see you later. Wow. Holy shit, dude. This game's incredible. Wow. Aw. Now we can go to Ryo Goku Bridge. God damn, dude. Wow. Wow. I'm in awe after that shit, man. God damn. This game hitting hard, bro. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so fucking cool. I love it when it's like, I'm like, oh shit, the game wants to do some crazy stuff. I'm like, wait, could it fuck it? You, you get an idea, like, could it actually be this? And when you get it, it it's actually the answer. It's such a, like, a fucking, like, rush of dopamine. Like, oh my God, holy shit, it's so sick. Oh God, wow. It's so good, man. Not even just the meta stuff, but just the, the writing in general has just been so fucking good. Oh man. You really did feel for that girl by the end, Jesus. I mean, before I feel, feel from the stars, this is where you're learning just all the fucked up shit she had to deal with. God dang. Well, all right, guys, I think this is probably a good spot to end things here for now. But God, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Enjoy this episode as much as I did. Uh, if you did, please do leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not ready. Become a picky penguin. Aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.